on today's Techno Babble. What is encoding and how do you do it? This is Tech No Babble, your weekly source for church video and graphics news, perspectives, tips, and tricks. And now, here's your host, Paul Clifford. Hi, and welcome again to another episode of Techno Babble. This is the show where every week we talk about using video and graphic design in the church. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. I'm your host, and I'd love for you to ask your questions or join the conversation. So head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com contact, or if you're watching this on video, either on YouTube or at trinitydigitalmedia.com. Just leave your questions or comments in the comment place below. That's perfectly acceptable as well. So recently we've been talking all about live streaming. Now part of that is because I write a monthly column on live streaming in Church Production Magazine. Part of it's because I'm nearly done with a book that I'm writing about live streaming. And part of it is just because it's really an issue that a lot of churches are bringing up nowadays. So I thought that we'd just go through some different little um, pieces about live streaming. Today, let's talk about encoding. So I don't know about you, but before I got into live streaming, I thought that, oh yeah, you just plug the camera into the computer and you fire some piece of software up and then you're you're good. Well, it might look like that, but there's actually a lot more going on behind the scenes. First off, in order to have a live stream, the video needs to be encoded properly. What that means is you can't just choose any kind of video. You can't just choose any standard or codec. It has to be properly formatted and broken apart in just the right way so that the live streaming host, the server, can interpret it and send it out to everyone that watches. Because people aren't connecting directly to you. They're connecting to someone else who has more bandwidth and the ability to send it out to multiple people at once, as opposed to just directly to you and your church. So that's the first lesson that you should know is that you connect your video source, let's say it's a camera, or it could be a video switcher, to an encoding device. Now that could be a computer with encoding software, or it could be an uh, encoding piece of hardware, you actually have a third choice, and that is that there are some cameras or some apps within smartphones that can do this just in and of themselves, so it's a one-piece deal. So those are kind of your three choices. What's important is you need some specific information from wherever you're sending this video to so that when the live streaming host gets the video they know oh that's from First Church Hackensack and they can put it to the appropriate field so there's usually an account name a lot of times there's a password as well that needs to be sent along with the live stream most churches are thinking, well, we'll just uh, get some software, throw that on a computer, and then we're good to go. And while it's the case that that will work, there are some downsides. First off, uh, the default encoding software that most churches use 
is Adobe, Adobe Flash Media Live Encoder. The reason for that is because Adobe provides it for free. And so that's what they choose, but it's not as robust as some of the more expensive solutions like Wirecast, for example, which I've used for a while. Um, but it works and it's free. Wirecast, on the other hand, works, but it costs between $500 and $1,000. So you, you could see how that would uh, make some churches think, ah, I don't think we're going to go that way. But let's talk also about streaming appliances. I just wrote a review on the uh, Killam, uh, A-Q-I-L-I-M, from uh, Digi Designs. And that's a great box that it's a one rack space box that you plug in either HDMI or SDI into and then it does all the heavy lifting and sends that out over the network to the internet and to your streaming host. So that's another way of going. Uh, Teradek also makes a box called the Video, V-I-D-I-U. I guess it's the Video. And the Video is another piece that's not as feature rich as the Akilum but it's much more value priced. So there's basically we've got a lot of choices. Do you need a lot of features? Do you need a lot of value? That's something really you should consider as you're deciding how to um, how to encode your video stream. One caution that I want to put out there is I don't want to hear about a church that falls victim to this without going in with their eyes open. There are a couple of services that have proprietary software or proprietary hardware, so they only work with those services. Now when you sign up for this service, you probably think, well, we'll be with them for years, no, no big deal, but what if something changes? What if there's a billing dispute? What if they decide they don't like Christian content anymore? Uh, you just, it doesn't matter what the reason is, but the question is, what if that happens and you need to change your streaming provider? Then you have a problem. Let's say the software costs $300, which seems like a bargain compared to Wirecast at at least $500. Except, once you switch from that streaming provider, you've lost your $300. You're not getting it back. And so you have to buy something else to replace it. So now, instead of saving $200, you're actually, you've spent $800 as opposed to the possible $500 if you'd gone with something like Wirecast. That's comparing apples to apples when we're talking about uh, software. In fact, some of the software is actually made by Wirecast and just they strip out a couple of features, uh, white label it, and these third-party services sell the software. Likewise, there are streaming boxes that might be less expensive, and these less expensive boxes only work with the one server. So you see, you've got the exact same problem. You've saved a little bit mon of money up front, but if there's a problem with the service, or let's say there's another service you find out about that's uh, got better service and they're less expensive, you might not be as quick to jump on the other service because you've already got a hardware investment. And that's a hardware investment you can't use over there. So it's, it's something that I want you to look out for. I want you to be um, go in with your eyes wide open. So just to recap, your choices when you're encoding are software on a computer, 
uh, built into a camera, whether it's a smartphone or there are some prosumer cameras that have it built in, or an external piece of hardware. You can go with something very feature rich for several thousand dollars or something very basic for a few hundred or as little as free on a, an existing computer using Adobe Flash Media Live Encoder. But please steer clear of proprietary systems that lock you into a streaming host because you don't want to be stuck. You don't want to have no choices in the matter. You want to be able to switch as you need to switch. Well, I hope that helped you. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop me a line, and I'd love for you to join my newsletter. So head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash gifts, G-I-F-T-S. I've got a free video course that I'd love for you to take unless you'd like a copy of my book, Tweeting Church. Either one is up to you. And um, you get a free uh, subscription to my newsletter and this free gift all at the same time by heading over there. So, I hope this information helps you and your church use your live stream to go out and change eternity. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com.